Debating about what one can be required to do with one's own body dictated by another is nothing new to the Idaho legislature, but the discussions took a few turns during the COVID pandemic. Prior to 2020, the word COVID never appeared in Idaho laws, or even in Idaho, obviously, but now that word is in proposed legislation on a daily basis. The Idaho Senate took up a big topic, discrimination based on COVID vaccine status. The question, can the government or a private business regulate vaccine status of their employees. Lawmakers say they are trying to balance the rights of businesses and the liberties of individ individuals. Well, Joe Paris takes us to the Idaho Senate and their debate of the Coronavirus Pause Act. The Idaho Senate took up the Coronavirus Pause Act to debate COVID vaccine requirements. Senate Bill 1381 proposes a one-year ban on businesses from requiring the COVID vaccine as a condition for employment. There are exceptions, though, for things like employees in a medical setting, but the bill threatens financial criminal penalties for businesses who don't comply. In all the time that uh, I've served in this body, I don't think I've ever worked harder on a piece of legislation. That's a big note from bill sponsor, Senate Pro Tem, Senator Chuck Winder. Winder says he crafted the legislation carefully to give exceptions for things like specific businesses that could risk losing Medicare and Medicaid funding, existing federal laws, and contracts that employers have already signed. I like to use the expression thread the needle on protecting the rights of the employee while trying to safeguard uh, the rights of the employer. Critics say the bill is government overreach and penalizes Idaho businesses already struggling. I can't in good conscience criminalize employers in an already diffi difficult economic time. I vote no. Senator Stennett votes nay. In short, the private sector businesses have been through enough in the past and have enough to worry about in the future without this mandate. As I've already indicated, if confined to the government, I'm all in. I was opposed to President Biden's mandate and would support 1381 if kept government specific. Supporters of the legislation argue that the bill is necessary to protect Idahoans from discrimination. Requiring someone to receive a coronavirus vaccination is a very personal and a very permanent decision. And it's not something that someone should be discriminated against because they did or did not receive um, that vaccination. And this is also a relatively new medical development. It's not a decision because of that that should be forced on someone uh, to maintain their employment. I see this bill as an American bill to give everybody a fair chance and uh, that it is anti-discrimination, pure and simple. Thank you. Critics of the bill, like Boise Democrat Senator Melissa Wintrow, raise questions about the bill and how the legislature handles discrimination issues. To criminalize business is a really horrific thing to do. And my heart is kind of heavy on this bill, as I have said before, because we talk about the word discrimination when it comes to a status when it, with a vaccine to stop the spread of a disease, and we are still resisting adding words, sexual orientation, and gender identity to our Human Rights Act, which is true discrimination. Senator votes nay. After debate in the Senate, the bill passed 24 to 11 along mostly party lines. Senator Winter says he believes the bill balances the values of business and the rights of an individual in Idaho. We tried to recognize that there are legitimate business interests uh, that need to be protected, but there are also legitimate personal interests that need to be protected. All right, Joe, first, the COVID vaccine is a permanent decision. I think there's a few boosters out there might have something to say about that. But does this only apply to the COVID vaccine? Yes, to be crystal clear here, the legislation, when you read it, it is specifically defined that this is only about the COVID-19 vaccine. Vaccine for anything else is not a part of this legislation. So again, as Brian mentioned a few minutes ago, this is a tailored bill specifically for COVID, something we would have never seen a few years ago, but it very specifically handles what is a COVID-19 vaccine. And you may be wondering, this one-year ban, when does it start, when does it end? Well, the way the legislation was written is that it would be a one-year ban from the day that the governor got rid of the state of an emergency. And the governor Little has announced that he's going to do that coming up in April. So one year from this April, Brian, that would expire if it got re up to be a whole other conversation. But it would be interesting to see where it goes from there. And what other virus comes down the pike as well. Maybe they'll have to craft a whole new law just for that too. All right, thanks, Joe.